So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm super happy to be here talking to you about uh, responsive UI and Uno platform. Um, already presented. So Uno platform uh, brings like your app to all the different form factors and all the different devices. So uh, doing a responsive design uh, is even bigger of a uh, becomes even more important uh, than ever. So that's why and I want to talk to you about, about that subject. The, and one of the big idea of, uh, of UWP, since UWP and XAMO was designed for desktop apps going from Windows and Windows apps, from <laughs> sorry, from Windows Phone all the way to Xbox. So the screens are, were very different. And they add, added in the language adaptive triggers, which is super powerful uh, uh, to uh, to achieve like the best responsive and adaptive design uh, possible. It's part of UWP. Will be part of WinUI 3.0 when it's released. Um, and it lets you enable uh, visual states based on the size of your window. So regardless of the platform, like the size is universal. So it's going to work on phones, it's going to work on tablets. You don't need to try and decide like, oh, I'm on iOS, I'm on iPad, or try to define the device. Uh, you just base everything on, on the sizes, the width, and the height of uh, things. And obviously, since we are today, it also is supported via the Uno platform uh, on all those uh, those platforms. Um, let's, let's go into uh, some demo code and try to show you how it's done. So here I have a very simple app. Uh, just It's a grid, then two, two rows, a title in hello in Oconf, and some description that was on the website. And uh, the, the default, like the state uh, that's behind it, just to uh, give you a better idea of uh, how it's, uh, what state is it. So this is the UI not really responsive, adaptive, as you can see. Like, at least everything is not cropped in, <laughs> and uh, the text uh, reflows. Um, so we'll go and add some, uh, some more uh, visual states to that. So we made some uh, snippets, so you don't have to watch me type everything. Um, so here, I'm creating a visual state group. The visual states can change any properties or trigger any animations through storyboards. So that's uh, so it lets you like do pretty much anything with the UI, with properties, with columns, layouts, uh, things like that. So here I'm, I created a group with two visual states. One is extra wide, which with an adaptive trigger of 1200, and I created a wide uh, visual state with an uh, adaptive trigger at uh, the width of uh, 800. So when the window is below 800, it's going to not apply any of those visual states. Higher than 800, but below 1200, it's going to apply the wide state. And then above 1200, uh, the extra wide state. So we'll go in and fill those with some, uh, some setters. Extra wide. So here I'm add four, s four visual setters. The first one is going to change the background of the root. Root is the first uh, the, f the first uh, panel that has the whole screen. I can even show you. It should update as I do the changes. Uh, yeah. So visual state ch is going to change the background. And then I'm changing the font size of the title and the description. Uh, to make them larger when the screen is, is super large. And also, I'm going to change the text at the bottom to extra wide. And then we'll do the same for the wide. And this one is going to change to a different color, orange in this case, and make the titles and, uh, and description uh, in between the two and change the text at the bottom. So now we can see if I resize this window. It changes color, uh, change, and uh, when I go into extra wide, uh, goes to blue. So that's to uh, to explain the concept uh, behind visual states in a in a very uh, basic uh, basic scenario. So 
if we go back to the PowerPoint, so what I wanted to show after is a more of a real world example. So this is uh, an introduction. And uh, one good example, as Jerome uh, showed you earlier in the keynote, is our uh, universal Azure DevOps organizer. It's all open source. You can uh, look it up on GitHub. So see the code I'm going to uh, to show you um, in a minute uh, over there. The app is uh, you log in with your Azure DevOps account. Uh, then you can see your stories, your sprints, your tasks, uh, and all that. So we'll go and, uh, and run that. So here I have uh, one project called Agile uh, with a summary, the sprint, and uh, work items. Uh, then you can uh, go back. And it's it through adaptive triggers, it resizes to like phone factor. And then above uh, a 1,000 pixels, it goes to like more of a tablet look. Uh, in this case, it's only one breakpoint. Uh, but we could go and add more if we wanted to, uh, to be more like uh, of a unique uh, uh, UI. Uh, we'll look specifically about the about about page. Oh, that sounded fun. Uh, <laughs> the uh, so here we have. I'll show. I'll highlight this with the the debugging tools on top. Uh, so you can select the text and see it on the visual tree over here. This is quite small. I'll try to make it. So we can see. So um, we have a content view, which is the scrollable section that was on the right. Yeah, with the magnifier, it doesn't work. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we have this content view over here. That's the whole uh, section that you see highlighted. And then we have a section with the, I have trouble seeing kind of this. And then the about view is the section with the uh, the text, the title, the description, and, uh, and all that. And this has two sections. One is stack panel, which is the, the paragraphs, basically. And one with the Lauren Moore and the links uh, on the to click and go to the platform website and the, uh, the GitHub. But when we, you'll notice that when we make the window bigger, the Lauren Moore section moves uh, from below the content to on the side because it makes more sense. You have more space on the on the screen, uh, so having it like below might not even be visible at first glance. Uh, so it's important to uh, to change uh, this, and this is achieved uh, all via adaptive triggers. I'll go in. I first. Uh, so here we have um, how it's done. There's two columns. The so there's two columns. One is uh, star, so it's going to take all the space it can, uh, since the other one is at width zero. And what the triggers are going to do is they are going to change the first column to auto, so it takes only what it needs, and change the width of the second one uh, to uh, to auto as well. So they'll kind of take the the space they require. And uh, as Billy uh, showed in uh, his session, uh, you can change, he, in his session, he bound uh, attached properties of grid, dot row, and row, uh, and column. But we can change those pro those attached properties through adaptive triggers also. And this will uh, uh, let us uh, change the layout uh, drastically. So we have this, the learn more section, you see. Uh, we change the column to auto, and then we can change the gr the grid column to one, and then uh, the row to zero, so it goes uh, all the way up uh, on the side instead of being at the bottom. So this is uh, not another example of uh, how like you could go uh, with uh, adaptive triggers. The so more uh, if you yeah some more advanced scenarios you'll probably want to use visual states and use adaptive triggers down into each control 
or um, each layout or user you don't want to put all of them like at the root of your page because then you end up with like 20 or 30 different uh, uh, setters uh, so here we see the we had one control uh, called page header so this is another section that adapts uh, like it goes bigger and changes its position uh, so this inside the control has its own adaptive triggers and uh, and all that so it handles uh, reacts on itself so we don't need to like add those triggers in every in every single page and uh, yeah. But uh, we saw like, oh, I forgot to show you, but it also works in WebAssembly. Just to save the compile time, I uh, already have it running on localhost, but uh, yeah, it's looking the, the same and reacts uh, just like on desktop uh, with the UWP. But I showed you examples on WebAssembly, on uh, uh, on desktop with UWP, which are like inherently resizable. You just drag and uh, increase the window. They're windowed applications. Uh, but we need to remember that uh, the mobile is evolving, and even like iOS since iOS 10 uh, has like a split view available on iPads. Uh, it's with iPad iPad OS that's coming out uh, today, I believe Miguel <laughs> uh, told us uh, it's uh, they're pushing the envelope even more. So we have here we're we're seeing uh, the Wado app that I sh showed you, uh, along with the Uno calculator. So the Uno calculator was built already with tons of vi uh, visual states on based with adaptive triggers uh, to be super responsive. Uh, so we just enable split view on our iOS apps, and we end up with one of the only, if not the only, uh, calculator app on iPad that uh, supports split view, uh, which could arguably be pretty efficient, like if you're typing an email where you want to do some calculations on the side, uh, instead of having a full screen uh, calculator and be and need to swap. Um, so there's that for iOS, and also with Android, uh, like foldable phones uh, will have you'll need to implement app continuity. So your app will need to uh, like ba basically resize when the, the, the user uh, uh, scrolls, like folds his phone and things like that. We don't know how long it's going to take uh, for uh, for foldable phones to be mainstream, but uh, there's that. And also uh, Android supports multi-windows. So you can have uh, three apps running at the same time on, uh, on either foldable phones or uh, tablets. Things like that. And you also have Chrome OS uh, supporting Android apps. So you have Android apps running in the window uh, environment, just like on uh, on WebAssembly, for example, or on UWP. Uh, so implementing and putting the effort only once uh, with Uno, you get all the benefits of responsive on all platforms. So that's what's uh, pretty uh, pretty awesome.